The whole purpose of Scratch Entrepreneur is to go on this ride together of, of entrepreneurship, of business ownership. And hopefully you listen to these episodes and it's like, oh man, I, I know exactly that experience and I'm so glad to hear someone else had it. Or, oh, I've been wondering how to solve that problem. This is how someone else solved it and I can use their template, their ideas as a way to do that myself. And we build a community that way of, of great business owners who know. Scratch Entrepreneur, true stories of remarkable people who dropped everything to turn an idea into a healthy, profitable business. Hey, this is Jeremy Goodrich, owner of Shine Insurance Agency, and your host for the Scratch Entrepreneur Podcast. Today, we are going to have a state of the pod episode, the first time we've ever done this. This is episode 36, so I figured it was time. There's a lot happening in the podcast, and I uh, thought I would share that, give you a little look behind the curtains of the show itself. We're usually giving you a look behind the curtains of different people's businesses and how they have figured out uh, things, successes, had successes, had their failures, telling their stories. You know, this is what the show is about, is about sharing the experience of being a business owner with other people, with you all. Um, and that's generally what we do on every episode we've had so far. But on this episode, I just wanted to talk about where things are at and give you a sense of what the experience is like uh, creating this podcast, as well as ask for your insight, ask for you to hear what we're doing, where we're headed, and uh, jump in and say, hey, this is what I love about the show. Nah, this is what I don't love so much about the show, so that we can make content that's great for you. That's obviously the purpose of, of the podcast, but I wanted to dig into kind of uh, the depths of it. So we're going to dig into three different parts today. Why we do this, why we have Scratch, how we do it, kind of behind the curtains on exactly how it happens, where we're at now, and what where we're going, some different things we're doing. So we're going to break it into those parts. I'm going to go through it pretty quickly, but I, I want to give you, you know, access to the information and, and maybe you're thinking about starting your own podcast and that would be awesome if you are. This would certainly give you some insight, but also just uh, insight into the future of things and how things are going. So before we dig in, I want to tell you uh, about some things that are going on. First, last week, if you didn't listen to the episode, it's Jonathan Grisbowski. He is a graphic designer, entrepreneur, and he talked about a bunch of things, but the two things that stuck out the most to me were uh, really how to get your first 200 customers. He talked about some things he did that were not scalable and then some stuff that he shifted to actually being scalable. And then another piece of our conversation that I thought was great was simply how to get the best out of your designers, how to reach out to the right designer and then reach out with the right information so you're designer can do the best job that they possibly can do. So those were two of the pieces that I really enjoyed from that conversation. That was episode 35. Next week, episode 37 is with the director of uh, Visit Bloomington. His name is Mike McAfee. He's right here in Bloomington, Indiana. So we'll be sitting down in the studio. And he is the director of a not-for-profit. The not-for-profit's not job is to uh, bring folks to Bloomington to show people who don't live here um, aspects of our town and community. And so I really think that conversation is going to have a lot of great insights into entrepreneurship, but also into kind of marketing, right? His job, what they do, what their uh, not-for-profit is, is a marketing vehicle, a marketing engine. So I'm looking forward to that conversation with Mike, Mike McAfee, and that will be next week. So that's what's going on right now. And of course, our new Patreon, if you uh, go over to www.patreon, I don't know, do you have to say www anymore? Uh, Patreon.com slash Scratch Entrepreneur is where all our after shows are. And um, we're going to be adding more content there. The after show for this, because usually we have an interview and then we have an after show afterwards. But the after show for this is kind of personal, actually really personal, maybe the most personal piece of, of who I am as a human being. And I thought since we're digging into the heart of the, the podcast this week, that having a, a more personal uh, piece in the after show made sense. And so what we're going to post... Um, 
on the Patreon account for this week is a actually a, another podcast interview that uh, I did with my wife Mackenzie on StoryCorps. So StoryCorps is a super neat um, podcast if you haven't listened to that before. And essentially, they drive around in this really neat uh, RV that is made out to be a, a recording studio. And they stay in towns for a couple of months, and people just go in there and essentially uh, interview each other, tell stories, uh, and that is archived in the National Archives and is a part of um, what StoryCorps does. And then some of those interviews, some of those conversations are the actual podcast that is StoryCorps. So the one that I'll be putting in the after show is not has not been aired on StoryCorps, um, but it is saved in the National Archives or whatever. And the story is really about um, me and my kids. So it's a kind of sad story. I had two children who passed away and, and uh, Mackenzie interviews me uh, about the story of those two kids passing away. It's about a 45 minute conversation. And uh, it was a really powerful conversation. It's something I am more than willing to talk about. I think it's uh, something that I like to talk. I, that sounds a little weird to say I like to talk about it, but it's something that I'm more than happy to talk about. And, and so I did that with Mackenzie. So if you want to check that out over at Patreon. Uh, com slash scratch entrepreneur, we'll post that there with this over um, episode. Okay, so let's dig in. <laughs> First, let's just talk about why we do this. Why do we have the Scratch Entrepreneur podcast? And I want to back us up a few years. When we first started Shine Insurance in 2013, I had been a school teacher for 13 years before that. And when I was thinking about coming over to insurance, it was like, oh, man, you know, insurance is certainly not teaching 8 to 10-year-olds, you know, as far as fulfilling act. And and how am I going to make sure that what we're doing is good work. I've always had some this attraction to, you know, doing good work for people. If, if if I don't feel like someone else is getting something out of whatever it is, then it's just not valuable to me. And I knew that, you know, insurance had the potential of, of more money, which is great. But um, how is it going to replace the value that I was getting from teaching? And, and probably the answer is nothing could totally replace that value. There's something in, inherently wonderful about being an elementary school teacher, or any kind of school teacher. And, you know, I, I'm not going to replace that. But I, I wanted to figure out how to have some of that still exist in our world. And so I've always been trying to figure out how to teach. You know, how can I educate or share information or, you know, connect with other people in a way that makes their life and my life better? And right at the beginning of Shine, I read Jay Bear's book, Utility, one of the uh, first books I read when we were starting to put together Shine. And, and Jay's perspective in that book was, was wonderful and simple. One great way to market what you do and your business is to figure out who your ideal client is and simply do something good for them. It doesn't matter if it has anything to do with what you actually sell or what your business is. In fact, it probably shouldn't have anything to do with it. You simply figure out ways to make the lives of your ideal clients better and they'll remember that. And they'll know that. And then when it's time for them to, you know, purchase your product or engage in the thing that you're providing as a business, they're going to look to you uh, for those those products. And that's when you can take amazing care of them, offer them an amazing product, all the kinds of things you do once someone comes in the door of your business. But one way to market is just to do good things for them. And that really connected. You know, that was like, okay, that's on the same line. Like, how can we do good? And so from the beginning, I've, I've really always been looking for ways to do that, to do good for the folks that are our ideal clients uh, at Shine Insurance. And so we've done things like uh, the, a new home buyer's guide. So we have a, a guide for first-time home buyers that talk, really walks them through the whole process. That came out of me wanting to help first-time home buyers. And with entrepreneurs, because business owners are someone who we'd love to serve at Shine Insurance, I, I kind of came up with Scratch Entrepreneur. And, and the idea came from 
us having just great conversations with people in our office when we're talking to them about insurance. I mean, insurance obviously isn't something that they're super excited about, but but when we're talking about insurance, we're digging into the heart of what their business is, what successes they're having, what struggles they're having, whether that's the financial side or all the other pieces with you know employees and stuff like that. The conversation just naturally turns to business ownership as a whole when we're talking with people about insurance. And so Mackenzie and I really thought, how could we get that on air? How could we share that with other people? Obviously not the details of stuff that, you know, is personal to a business and, and business owners don't want to share, but um, the, the heart of the stories and the struggles and the successes and all that stuff, how could we share that? And that's how Scratch Entrepreneur was born, it was simply you know, at the beginning, the intro says it's stories of people who dropped everything to build a healthy, profitable business. And that's what we were trying to create was just stories. Let people tell their stories, uh, get those ideas out and, you know, make that connection. So that is why we still do what we do is to help people hear the stories of other businesses, right? It's, I mean, it's pretty simple. And then to learn from their uh, successes, mistakes, all that kind of stuff. And so as I've been doing this, so now it's been two years, a little more than two years, and uh, 30, this will be the 36th episode, which if you do any math, uh, for the first, you know, some of these have been one per month, you know, and other times it was more than that. But at first I was just doing one per month, just trying to get that in there. And then uh, at the beginning of 2018, I made a commitment to do it every two weeks. So we were going to have an episode go out every two weeks, and my goal was to do that through July. And I succeeded at that and it became more kind of together. And then now it's uh, every week. And so we've slowly been ramping up. But all of these episodes, all 36 of these episodes have just simply been conversations between me and a business owner about their business. And what I've, I've come to realize is that there are a few different sets of insights that come out of, of all of these conversations. And so I'm going to give you some examples here of, of some of the different things that I've realized inside of these conversations and that I've realized that at least me as I think I'm the ideal listener to Scratch because I, I learn so much and sometimes it's from these successes and failures. So I think about uh, Michael Cassidy, the owner of Uptown Cafe. His episode, he talked about a lot of things, but it built to him sitting uh, at the corner of the bar that's a part of his restaurant in the afternoon, two or three o'clock and looking around and, and um, the servers are doing their thing and the bartenders are doing their thing and the manager is doing his or her thing and the tables look a certain way and the, the space looks a certain way. And he said, I felt like it was the culmination of my 40 year painting. I've been doing this for 40 years, and finally I look at this painting and it feels complete in some way. And, and the success that he feels after 40 years of building something, that that feels like a completed space now. And I thought that was such a neat success. Onto the, you know, a, a failure. Uh, I was talking with Rebecca Warren, who is the director of the Monroe County Humane Association, which I, I think is one of the best conversations, one of the one of the great episodes um, in the history of Scratch. And, and I asked her a question, you know, I asked her what's a failure she's had as a, as a director. And, you know, let me just play you that piece right here. So the last thing that we did yesterday was euthanize a parvo-positive nine-week-old puppy. Mm. And nobody, nobody wants to do that. But the puppy had zero chance against that disease. It's completely vaccinatable for our clients. They just, they make other choices sometimes that we don't like, but we have to deal with the aftermath. Mm -hmm. um, so that Super powerful, right? I mean, the work that Rebecca does and, and so many folks at not-for-profits, you know, walking through that experience and, and just getting to, to hear from her that struggle. I mean, I feel like I, I connected with that struggle. A lot of our listeners connected with that struggle. And uh, for obvious reasons, she's doing wonderful work. And sometimes even when we're doing wonderful work, it hurts, you know, and, and I th thought that was a neat failure. And then kind of a, uh, the last 
successes and failures thing is a, a combination of, of a failure and a success at exactly the same moment. And Mike Brodovsky, who is Lil Bub's dad, if you haven't listened to that episode, it's, it's great. He is he has a re- recording studio, and this recording studio is beautiful, amazing, well put together, a quality space, a space that any good artist would want to record at. And he tells the story of this uh, recording studio being built and growing and then almost looking like um, it could come to failure before uh, something else that happened in his life kind of saved that. And I thought that, you know, it was just the balance of success and failures. And sometimes sometimes we get lucky, you know, and sometimes we put ourselves in a position where we can get lucky. I don't think it's just like magical luck. I don't think that happens as often as we, we put ourselves in positions and sometimes that works out for the best and sometimes it doesn't and, and we go from there. So the successes and failures Failures are one of the great things I love listening to as a part of these conversations. And also the insights, you know, just I think of Jason Wilbur from uh, the second episode of Scratch where he, he said, everything I've ever gained came from relationships. You know, and he's a musician, and for some reason I just looked at his role as a musician and didn't think, well, yeah, that's a relationship-based thing, you know. But, but as I listened to his story and as he described it, it absolutely was true. Every single point that he kind of jumped up the ladder, he had a connection, someone he'd done good for, some way that he'd made it happen, someone who got him in the back door of a bar before he was even of age to be in there so he could step up on stage and and, and jump in for someone uh, with a band, and, and that sparked some new step. So that was great. I thought about uh, the episode with Donald Griffin, who... There was this guy he would see around town, and he, the guy always said, "Hey, come over, sit on my porch, you know, and and we should chat." And Donald always said, "Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to do that at some point," and and never really, never got to it. And then the guy passed away, and Don went to his funeral, and you know, some of the advice that he had given other people, other business owners like Don. Um, in town was simply about how to lead your business, how to be a leader without having to stand in the front of the pack, you know, without having to be the front of the story, without having to be the face of the conversation. And he learned from that funeral, really, from all those other business owners, you know, describing how that guy had described things to him, how, how to be a leader. So those were just, you know, a couple of insights that I remember from conversations. And then the last thing that I think is why I'm our ideal listener and I just, you know, love having these conversations with folks is the inspiration behind a lot of the work that entrepreneurs do. And and the example here is Paul Scholberg, who's a writer and director of, of films, And we were talking, and he was talking about The Good Catholic, which if you haven't seen the film, I would encourage you to do so and um, maybe listen to the episode after watching the film and and listen to him describing, uh, you know, all the different elements and aspects of it and the motivation behind it. And to me, that, that motivation behind it, in his case, very deeply related to his family, his mother and his father were inspiration to two of the characters in that film. And, and his father had passed away recently uh, prior to um, the movie coming out and, and all those kinds of things. And, you know, I just felt like in that conversation, Paul shared and was open about the inspiration about his creativity, you know, his piece and his movie. So I think I just, you know, love hearing those stories. Uh, and I don't know, maybe got I got off of track a little bit there. I was talking about how we started and why. And I guess the reason is that, uh, you know, getting these stories out, I often interview folks who have not necessarily been interviewed a ton of times. They aren't, you know, famous particularly, but they have these stories that just are the backbone of their business, of their personality, 
of you know who they are. And I hope that that comes out. I hope that every episode that you listen to, you experience that. And, and that's why we do this, is simply to share those stories. We'll continue. I'm going to tell you some things that are changing a little bit and how we're going to add to the mix. But we're always going to continue to tell the stories of people who dropped everything to build a healthy, profitable business, because I think that is the heart of what Scratch Entrepreneur is. Okay, we're going to take a quick break, and then I'm going to talk uh, real quickly about how we do what we do, a little bit more of, of the nuts and bolts of Scratch and how we do what we, what we do, and we're going to do that as soon as we come back. All right. Welcome back. This is the state of the union, the state of Scratch Entrepreneur. <laughs> the uh, the episode of Scratch Entrepreneur that just talks about Scratch. It's just me. I'm standing in my home office right now, just on the microphone talking to you all. Hopefully, as you listen to this episode, you learn more about why we do what we do, but also, um, you know, why we're doing it for you, why it makes sense for you to listen, and if it makes sense for you to listen. So let's, in this section, though, we're, we're going to talk about how we do what we do. So when I started, and, and I just explained it in the last section, you know, we, we wanted to share stories of, of folks, but I wanted it to be like NPR style. You know, I don't know how many podcasts you listen to, but when I listen to podcasts, I love, you know, the ones that are done by uh, NPR or other radio stations or a lot of podcast networks that have some time. They're, it's their full-time jobs. They may have multiple people on the episodes. And you get these episodes that are just artworks. You know, there there's voiceover coming through, there's the interview, there's transitions and music, there's insights. And the whole thing is put together like an orchestra almost. And I love listening to those stories. And when I first started Scratch, I was like, I'm going to create those. I'm going to make those stories. This is going to be how we are going to do it. And then I tried that for a couple of episodes. And <laughs> anybody who's ever tried to do an MP NPR style podcast by themselves, you know, either has nothing else to do, which that's awesome, or realizes that it is simply not, you know, you don't have enough time in your life to do episodes the way that NPR does. And there's a reason why they have money behind it and, and employees and people who have different roles and everything else, you know, because it, it takes time to make something beautiful. And so after a couple of rounds of spending entire weekends, probably 24 total work hours on an episode and them coming out and me feeling kind of frustrated with it. And I spent a ton of time and didn't hang out with my family for that weekend and thinking, well, how am I going to do this over and over again? I realized that it just really needed to be the interview with an intro and an outro and maybe some cuts in the middle um, that I, I did. And even that was going to take a lot of time. And so even just doing it that way, for almost two years, I spent you know, maybe 10 hours on, on each episode of going through, of cutting out ums and ahs and, you know, those kinds of things so that our guests sounded as good as I could make them and, and then making sure that all the levels were right and making sure it got exported from uh, the software right correctly. And that's, that's after, you know, scheduling the interview and making sure that the interview went well and thinking about the questions ahead of time and, and then making sure everything got set up and uploaded and then by the time I got to, you know, posting it out on social media and writing the show notes, I was done. <laughs> you know, it's like I've already put so much work into it. Um, so it was just a, a really time consuming process. I, I love I loved it. Um, but it is a time consuming process. If you are going to do a podcast by yourself without any help from anyone else, even if it's just you on the microphone, it, it can be time consuming and it takes some knowledge. And I, you know, Mackenzie will tell you, I enjoyed it. It was great, but it was very, very time consuming. And I really needed to uh, find a way to address it. Ultimately, I am not an audio engineer, you know, and it, it can take an audio engineer sometimes or, or at least just another person in there to do that. So the way that we do the, the podcast now is I still schedule 
uh, the episodes, bring folks on. If you're someone who would like to be on Scratch Entrepreneur, I'd love to have you. Uh, just reach out to me through the Scratch Entrepreneur Facebook page or uh, my email address, jeremy at shineinsurance.com. And so we'll schedule, we'll get together, we'll, we'll do the interview, and then I will record a couple of you know, I'll record the intro, I'll rec- record the outro, and then I'll, I'm actually now, I, I love saying this, it's the best, I'm super pumped, um, handing the audio editing off to someone else, uh, a person who is a freelancer and now a part of our, I guess our like podcast team, I don't know how to say that, I mean, we just have a couple of freelancers, so we have him, Chris Lang, who is doing the audio editing, which is so awesome, I've really enjoyed that, we've just started doing that in the last four or five episodes, and it's been such a huge help. And um, then we have a, a local guy in Bloomington who's doing some of the copy editing too. So after the audio is all set up, I make sure it's put together right and all that. That Then he comes in and, and makes sure that the show notes are right and, and goes from there. And then right now I'm doing the, I'm doing the social media at the end too. But so we're, we've moved from me doing everything, which totally fine. Um, but I don't necessarily suggest, to really having a small team that's helping us put these episodes together. And so one of the things I wonder from you, and, and I would love to hear feedback, is have you, if, if you're someone who's listened to a lot of the episodes, have you heard a difference in the last few episodes? And is that difference good or bad? Um, I'm not as deeply connected with every single cut and every single decision about ums and ahs and spacing and and those kinds of things. And so obviously I make sure I think it sounds good, but I'd love to hear also if you think it sounds good. So that's kind of a heart of how we do it. Um, I basically have a team, like I said, I've got uh, Chris who's doing the audio editing, Kirk who's doing the copy editing, my buddy Mark Vinton has created all the music for the episodes, Um, Mackenzie is the person that I bounce everything off of, and then we also have sort of another member of the team that isn't a human, but that's the studio, and that's a space where, you know, there's four microphones, we can have multiple people in there, and a, a mixing board and stuff like that so that we can have a really nice, hopefully good quality audio, I'm totally into good quality audio, and I hope that you hear that in these episodes. Okay, so that was the nuts and bolts. We're going to take another quick break, and then I'm going to dig into where we're, where we are and where we're going. That should just be kind of a fairly quick five, six minutes, and then we'll finish the episode from there. Okay, so you're listening to the State of the Podcast podcast, the State of Scratch Entrepreneur podcast. I'm Jeremy Goodrich, your host. I'm just standing in my home office by myself right now. Usually we're sitting down and talking. Uh, I'm sitting down and talking with other entrepreneurs, business owners, folks with insight into business. But today it's really just the state of the pod. I hope you're enjoying it. I'm just trying to give you kind of insights into how it's going, what I'm thinking, why we're doing what we're doing, and how we're doing what we're doing. So over the, the course of the two years that we've been doing this, you know, I've interviewed a lot of people, mostly people in my hometown, Bloomington, Indiana. So it's the easiest thing to do. And obviously it's where you can be face to face. You can have that connection. And um, I would go to their space for a lot. Probably the first 10 episodes, I would just take my microphone and my recorder. I remember sitting down with um, the folks at Cardinal Spirits and just, you know, going back and forth with the microphone. I would talk, then he would talk, and I would talk, and then he would talk. And if you listen to uh, that episode with Jeff, you can hear the, you know, we're in the bar, so you could hear the bar right behind us. And I I liked that on some level. And then with others, it it made the, the sound quality real rough and it really depended on the space. And so I just, I started having folks come to uh, a studio that I was sort of creating inside of Shine Insurance. And so that's been happening over the course of the last maybe five or six episodes is that people come to us, then the sound is controlled and all that kind of thing. But something else has started happening recently. And it's that more people have been reaching out and saying, hey, 
Um, here's someone you should interview, or I'd love to be on your podcast. And these are folks who aren't in Bloomington necessarily. These are folks who are all over the country and all over the world. And, and there's some episodes that are examples of that. Uh, Esmeralda Kent, one of the most mesmerizing descriptions of someone's story. If you haven't heard that episode, I hope you go back and listen to it. She, I mean, I, I, I describe it as, I felt like I was creating a Forrest Gump type of scenario. Esmeralda has just been so, through so many things, has been a center of so many things that were going on in American history. And I just kind of let her talk. I mean, I didn't, we almost didn't talk a lot about her business itself because her personal story was so fascinating that we just kind of went there and, and let her describe her personal story. And I think it's a neat, neat story. Um, but that was a connection. I've interviewed Whitney Nicely from Eastern Kentucky, the real estate investor, Simone and Malcolm Collins, who live in Peru and are, are venture capitalists. Lots of different people have started to reach out. And actually, there's these things out there that are called guest concierge services. So I'm starting to get probably four or five emails a week where there's people saying, hey, I've got four or five, you know, I've got five folks. Here's, here's their names. Here's what their stories are. Here's what they do. Would you like to have them on? And so the, the pros of that, of having all these different folks come on is that we get insight from a greater variety of people, right? If we're trying to build smart businesses, build healthy, profitable businesses, having someone from wherever who's really smart, who has done this stuff before, tell us what their experience has been and how they've gotten to where they're at is, is awesome. You know, that's, that's what I love. I love having these conversations. And so I've, I've been bringing the folks on that makes the most sense to me. I mean, I'm saying no to, to a lot of the folks that are presented, but you know, some I'm like, okay, here we go. That, that makes a lot of sense. Let's have that connection. And I think a lot of those interviews work out well. There's a couple of cons to, you know, this one is, audio quality. I, again, I'm into good audio quality. And so when you're interviewing people over Skype or whatnot, there's, there's a little bit of a difference in quality, but it also starts to muddy the water a little bit in my mind about why, what, you know, what's the podcast? Why are we doing this? Are we interviewing local business owners around Bloomington, Indiana, or are we just interview? Are we interviewing folks that have intelligent things to say about being entrepreneurs? And I think that's the bottom line that I've gotten to is I love having face-to-face -face conversations. So the more people that are close to me that can come to our studio um, and have these conversations, the better. But if someone's got insight, um, there's, there's zero reason we should not have that conversation just because they're further away and we've got to do it over Skype. So I, I'm going to continue to have interviews with folks who are not local, but also have folks who are, are local and can sit down. I just think there's a difference in, in value and quality and, and just being able to sit face to face with somebody. So we're going to continue to do both of those things, having local interviews, stories of, of, of entrepreneurs in and around Indiana, as well as folks in and around the United States, Canada, and the world. The other cool thing that we're up to is that I I went to a uh, I went to a networking event where David Quick, uh, executive business coach, was talking, and I'd known of David Quick before. I've been watching his work for a long time, and he uh, I interviewed him a couple of episodes ago, but I just got to thinking about uh, coaches. And this idea that we, we, there's lots of executive coaches out there and we like to be coached and it's important, especially for entrepreneurs. Being coached is so important because we're, we're kind of alone. I mean, that's part of what this podcast is about is helping us to hear from other people, to have a community. But I was, I thought, well, what if we could, we could have on air coaching sessions so that people could have a specific crossroads or a specific concern or a spe specific issue that they're dealing with, and and David could coach them through it. And, and so listeners like you could hear exactly how that coaching process was happening and hopefully learn a little bit from it yourself as well. So I, I emailed David and I said, hey, I, I got an idea. You want to go get coffee? And, and we sat down and, and I just pitched him the idea. And he said, great, I'd love to. 
and I think it it says something about David, just that he was so quick to to be willing to jump on this. I mean, this is a guy who has been at the highest level of the biggest companies out there, and is you know doing doing work that most of us, most of us business owners, simply couldn't afford. We you know he is uh, the quality. Uh, he's he's the type of person, the quality of a person that can ask for a certain amount of money that is reasonable for his services. But, but most of us wouldn't be able to afford that. And so for him to be willing to come on our show, to sit down with folks and have these conversations on air, so not only that person can experience his coaching, but all of you can hear, experience his coaching too. I, I'm just pumped. I think those, those conversations are going to be great, and we have some of them scheduled. And if you haven't heard the one where Mackenzie and I are sort of the first people to step out there and say, hey, we have this thing about Shine Insurance that we want to talk about, specifically how to scale up from where we're at right now. And he did a great job with us, and, and we really appreciated his coaching. So these on-air coaching sessions are another piece that we're going to add in because I just think it's more value to, to your life, you know, and to my life as a business owner. I mean, every time I'm having these conversations, I, I get to be in the seat where I get to, you know, ask those questions and hear those pieces, and I love every minute of it, and I hope that you do too. So so kind of the last piece of this episode is I want to ask you specifically, how is this podcast, how is Scratch Entrepreneur adding to your life? How is it helping you make better business decision? Or, or maybe it's not. How is it helping you to feel like other people have the same struggles and successes as you? How is it having a, a concrete effect on your business or your life? I want to know because I want to make sure that the directions that we're going make sense. So what I'd like you to do is if you can just take a second and go, you know, I, I can think of three places where it would be great to do this. One is the Scratch Entrepreneur Group on Facebook. If you haven't joined already, you have to ask and we'll let you in. But, you know, go there and, and please just share your thoughts on how this is working for you or specifically how it's not working for you. You know, a little bit of good feedback, a little bit of, you know, uh, constructive feedback would be great. You could also go to the Patreon page and on the community board, you could uh, pop some of those thoughts out as well. And then if you just wanted to email me, Jeremy at Shine Insurance, you know, and say, hey, I didn't want to put this in a public forum, public space, but I just wanted to really let you know this particular episode really uh, you know, hit me in a certain way, or this particular piece of what you do is, is like makes me turn the episode off or this particular episode, just like I turned it on and, and it just didn't work for me. I, I want to know all that stuff because that, you know, as business owners, we all know that, um, the feedback, the understanding, you know, your community is as important as anything else you do. And so if you could take a moment after this episode and just reach out and let me know how Scratch Entrepreneur is affecting your life as a business owner, that would be awesome. Okay, in conclusion, so we are going to continue doing stories about very real business owners. Some of that will be sitting down with me in the scra in the uh, Shine studio, and other times we'll be doing that over uh, Skype or audio. We're going to have experts come on and talk about specific elements of owning a business. Sometimes these folks aren't entrepreneurs anymore. Maybe they were entrepreneurs. Now they're, they go out and they talk about the specific elements. And so we're going to dig into that with them. And then finally, one of the pieces I'm super pumped about, and if you want to be on these sessions, please do let me know. I think they're real valuable, is the on-air coaching sessions. We're calling it Crossroads with David Quick, and I'm looking forward to that. Okay, so that is the state of Scratch Entrepreneur, the state of the podcast. If you want to hear my personal story about a piece of an important piece of my life, head over to Patreon and uh, patreon.com slash scratch entrepreneur. We've also got the app after shows from a couple of our previous episodes. You can check those out as well. Uh, there's more personal content. There's some merch over there and some resources as well at Patreon. 
dot com slash scratch entrepreneur. Okay, for those of you that are not headed over to Patreon, I just want to thank you so much for listening. It really does mean a lot to me, and I hope that this show means a lot to you. If you could take a moment, please subscribe to our show wherever you listen and rate the show on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts. That really does help our episode. Okay, we'll see you the same time, same place next week. Mm-hmm.